Hey guys, so what we're going to discuss at the cake today is what to look for when buying a 7.3 liter power stroke diesel and a lot of these other tips and tricks are also going to be applicable to um, you know most other diesels uh, depending on whether they have this stuff or not whether you know they're a mechanical engine or if they're an electronic engine and then the newer engines well they got all kinds of stuff that the uh, 7.3's thank god don't have on them so here <clears throat> okay so as most of you guys are aware of you know you're gonna look at your body and frame problems we're addressing straight up engine problems only in this video first thing you always want to do is pay clear, close attention to the person trying to sell you the thing if, it, if it's a kid or something be wary <laughs> um, one thing you always look look for you know is it got fresh batteries what shapes the air filter in you know because if it looks grungy as I don't know what chances are they didn't bother to maintain the thing since the oil or the air filter is cheaper than oil change um, you know you always check the oil to make sure it's even got what even close to what it's supposed to in it because I mean of course they can tap top it off before you know meeting you but you know a lot of times they're probably not going to so check the engine oil transmission fluid some of the problems on this truck have already been replaced like things that look clean like the coolant recovery tank the first thing you're probably going to want to do yes yes start and hear it run I understand but there's more to it than that before you do this and it's also good that the truck is cold sorry I'm Try not to pull it all the way out, but you want to check the dipstick. Now, my oil looks really good in there, and it's got like 500 miles or so on the oil change. But what you want to really watch out for is not really necessarily seriously black oil because, I mean, it's going to look like coal coming out of a diesel. What you're going to watch for is something that looks more like a milkshake substance where there's water has gotten into the oil and that's what you're not going to want uh, and while it's running you also want to check out of the uh, um, oil filler cap there to see about some blow by I also pasted in a video here showing what a 7.3 looks like with some serious blow by Um, the other things that you want to check for while the truck's running, if you want, um, 73 is usually a head gasket, it's not something you ever come up with, but, um, anyway, on the, on any diesel with it running, you want to, you want to squeeze the, the upper radiator hose, and if it, if it's really just really hard to squeeze and really firm, you know, not because of the, whatever pop they decide to use, but I mean, you know, if it's normally flexible when the engine's off and all that, you might have a blown head gasket. You always check your water to make sure that there's no oil or diesel in it. Um, this truck is just running, so yeah, it had a little pressure on it, you know. You always want to make sure it looks good. Um, on diesels, you also want to get you some chest strips after you buy the thing and make sure that they have enough additive in them to prevent cavitation. It's usually called like an SLA additive, I think. Because <clears throat> most people don't keep up on that, and that causes cavitation. Little pinholes that show up in your cylinder walls that uh, water comes into your engine and and also the plate behind your uh, water pump um, one of the other things that you're going to want to check and this is just as important as your blow by on one of these trucks but you're going to want to look especially if it's got the factory air filter housing you're going to want to wiggle this and see if you can get it to move from the lower portion of the box which uh, well when I first got this truck it was and uh, that right there, that's some uh, JB weld. That's because this box was cracked right there. And uh, it went on down into the little uh, lip that goes down in that groove or whatever you want to call it. 
and prevented this box from sealing right. And then I took some RTV and ran a bead of it around both sides of the filters and sandwiched that back together and clamped it down. Because uh, once this air filter's done, I'm going to uh, replace it with cold air intake. Or at least, uh, you know, redneck version with the with the canister filter on the end anyway because uh, these filter housings are notorious for ruining these engines when they crack or fail to seal properly allowing particulate to uh, wind up going uh, into the engine turbocharged style okay <clears throat> now the thing you're going to want to do when you look top side is you're going to want to look really close into the engine valley to see if you can see any leaks um, this one's got a oil leak at the turbo pedestal but that aside um, you know you're probably not going to find one without leaks so really that just depends on how picky you want to be and how you want to use that as a negotiating tactic to uh, you know do your price down okay so right here is your injector pressure control sensor um, that's got the new style on it you want to check that because that hasn't been replaced. It's going to need to be. Um, this right here is the new style. The old style has a more rounded body with a uh, smaller nut towards the bottom where it connects down to the head. I don't have one to show you. I do apologize. I always note the condition of the crappy wires because um, if it's an older diesel, I mean, wires are going to be in, uh, you know, in crunchy shape probably this truck here has 450,000 miles almost it within just a little of that like a thousand miles or less um, another thing you're going to want to do is there's your under valve car cover harness connector um, you want to take those off and check and see if you can see oil coming through those it probably is on this one I'm not going to take those off to show you I have done so in a previous video and also what I want to point out is this um, on the uh, 94 and a half to uh, 98 power strokes the valve cover harness had two connectors front and back um, on the uh, 99 to 2003 7 7.3 liter there was just a single connector in the middle of the valve cover harness which I both like and don't it just kind of depends on how you look at it because then if you unhook one of the valve covers you've killed the whole back the whole bank on the older ones you know if you unplugged a connector that was just two injectors so kind of make diagnosis a little easier but anyway um all that aside um the real reason for me remaking this video is because i had the uh, uh i had a 96 and 97 f350 and neither had the uh, fuel bowl right here because I had deleted it in lieu of an electronic fuel pump conversion. So the top of my, the top side of my engine didn't look like everyone else's. So now with this video, it'll look just like how it would if you go and you know find one in the stock version, um, especially if it's got the uh, intercooler on it. Which I mean that's cool, but then there's that that's that much more junk on top of your motor. Anyway. Other things you want to check, obviously, are the serpentine belt. It's been replaced on this truck. Shouldn't need one yet, and if it does, then there's something really wrong. Um, one thing to really look out for on these is if you see, like, loads and loads of, of caked-on fluid, which might not look that bad because I took a pressure washer and knocked some of this crap off, but there's, like, gobs and gobs and gobs of fluid here on the driver's side, especially compared to the passenger side. Well, you'd think maybe your power steering pump's leaking, which that's what I thought was going on, but if you look at the filler cap of that bad boy, you can uh, tell it's been leaking from that. That is about retarded. But about every Ford I've had, I've had trouble with power steering pumps leaking from the caps. So... Um, I did go get me a new cap and hopefully that'll stop the fluid from coming out the top of it. <laughs> okay, so. Now, not all sellers are going to like it if you drag your tools on site to start pilfering and looking 
and what you're wanting to buy. But if they're a good sport, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this impact, in, intake pipe off and inspect the turbo wheel and the housing in there. You're going to kick tires, you can look at the battery cables, and I mean, look at this stuff here. Man, that's in pristine shape there, ain't it? This definitely stock form. But, uh, you know, um, then here on this side of the engine, it looks like, uh, you know, people went crazy just pouring oil all over it. And doesn't look like it's really ever been cleaned up or even happened to have been taken apart much. So I'm kind of relieved to see them like that because, I mean, at least it didn't leave me feeling like the uh, seller had it apart and then was like, ah, I'm done with this mess. Then, of course, you will want to look underneath it. I mean, do your diligence. Um, really, what you want to watch for underneath the thing, really, is uh, has it been in a wreck and has the frame been mangled? I mean, that's more important than looking to see what shape your driveline is and all that. I mean, unless that's just all you came to get the truck for, I guess I should rephrase. But, I mean, if you're just going to go buy a truck to drive... You will, will, will want to inspect the frame. I've went to uh, see several used vehicles and uh, found that the frames are so awful, either from rust or because they've been wrecked and damaged at some other point. That, I mean, they just weren't safe. Um, this vehicle here has all smiles on it. You won't be able to tell it by looking at the uh, frame and all. <clears throat> Typically, when you go to buy a used vehicle, the shocks are probably bad shape and uh, you know I'm not going to go through the whole tire kicker thing this video is more about uh, what you need to look for when buying a diesel okay so another thing that you are going to want to pay attention to while you're under the truck is uh, right here and I'm not talking about that uh, I need to screw my oil filler on just a little tighter I'm talking about the uh, oil to water uh, cool <clears throat> talking about the uh, engine oil cooler here uh, water and oil both go through this tube it goes to the front of the engine where an oil go in one end and come out the other and there's fins on the inside of that but um, there are really there's another thing right here where that wire is screwed into the side of the um, oil cooler and uh, oil filter housing assembly that's your block heater um, if your truck has a bunch of miles on it and you can tell that that hadn't been replaced, make sure and go ahead and have that have that done because if uh, that fault that heater's faulty and you plug it in, there have been uh, trucks burn up just because the stupid block heater was crap. So you know, don't let it happen to you, okay? Um, that right there is the only mod done to this truck was an EGT sensor, so you know. I'm really glad and happy with the place they stuck it in. That's going to give a really good reading. Um, I mean, you know, you can look at trans over and all that, but looking at it ain't really going to tell you nothing, really, really. Uh, I mean, you know, unless it's raining fluid and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, let's get on to another matter here. On the uh, back side of the engine, if you're leaking oil, Chances are it's coming from right there. It's a turbo pedestal. I'm sorry, I can't get a good picture of that. So let's go on the other underneath side of the engine. Let me show you the other cute things to watch out for. And I mean, you know, you guys know to watch out for, uh, you know, your bell housing being wet. And then, oh yeah, another thing, if you have an older power stroke, the 94 and a half to 98s that have the mechanical fuel pump, you'll be, and it's, if it's leaking, it's gonna leak to the right, right hand side of the block and drip. I got another video about that and I'll try to make sure and post that in the description. Well, let's go to the other side and I'll show you. So if uh, when you're running your truck if you're uh, getting a drip right around this region that's pretty constant it's probably your fuel pump if it has the mechanical style it is. Then right here we've got the starter behind it the engine oil dipstick tube which uh, uh, fitting which uh, is prone to leakage it looks like maybe that guy has thought about leaking a little I can't really see it that well 
But uh, when that becomes a problem, it's not really a hard fix. It's just annoying because where it is, and it requires starter removal. You need to clean off the side of the oil pan and lay lots of RTV sealer to it because that's really the best fix for it. Been there and done that already. Um, I guess the other thing I really need to mention here downside, you really want to watch your oil pan because um, I've seen where people had to take the engines out of these trucks just because the oil pan had rotted out from under it. And the engine wasn't ready to be pulled, but the oil pan said it's too bad to take me out. So you will want to watch that really close. Um, this one's just got surface rust and crud on it. Super, super happy that it's not in crap shape, especially with, uh, you know, creeping on closer to half a million miles. I was, you know, that's actually one of the first things I was paying attention to was how bad is the oil pan. <laughs> and I've seen it with loads of rust. I haven't had it, I haven't gotten one yet personally that was a problem. I don't want to, unless I'm just planning on taking that engine out. But the other thing to do would be to uh, take off that intake hose there you need a eight millimeter bolt you need eight millimeter socket and just a flathead screwdriver to get all that junk off there and what you're looking for is you want to see if there's like a bunch of oil inside the turbo because if there is then it's been sucking up quite a bit of oil for whatever reason or another out of the uh, crankcase um the other obvious things of course to look for are leaks um you know Lots of these things leak from the uh, power steering pump, usually like from the top of the cap, because a lot of times it gets on there crooked and won't stay on there right and stuff like that, and it leaks power steering fluid everywhere like this one has. Um, other places to check leaks for, you see right here, it's a little wet around the H-pop seal and all that. Yeah, that's right, it's oozed a little at some point in its life. And the valve covers, you know, they're, they're pretty dingy on here. But that's because it looks like the valve cover gaskets are giving out. Um, other things to check would be the uh, boots that go on the turbo intake. Um, other things to check would be like, of course, the boots that go on the Y-pop to your turbo. And uh, you also want to check, um, you know, there's no fuel ball on this truck, but on the other 7.3s there are. And you'd want to check, you know, and look and see how nasty it looks down in there. You know, all this stuff plays in a part as to how much you're going to pay for a truck. So, check and see how clean that fuel filter housing is and check the filter and see what it looks like. The turbo pedestal. It's hard to, it's hard to really tell for sure with the transmission in the truck. But, uh... You know, there's O-rings that go bad in those and that's a pain to get out and put back in and all that. And I mean, of course, the, the biggest thing of all, so listen to how it runs, I mean. Um, here in this video, you've heard how this truck runs. And that's the way that one should run when everything's working as it should. So, if it's got a skip or a miss in it, there's all kinds of things that could cause that. Um, you know, like I said, pay attention to the kind of people that have owned it before if you have any way of knowing, you know. And, uh, you know, somebody that acts like they probably don't take care of anything, you know, they probably don't. That's why a lot of people, you know, get get shafted when it comes to their first diesel purchase. So that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate your time. And if you like my stuff, then check out the front of my channel there and check out the different playlists that I have. I try to categorize my videos as best I can so that they're easier to find based on what your preferences are. Uh, I've also got Christian videos on there. I strongly urge you to check those out as well. If you want to learn more about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I also pray that He richly blesses you and your families, then check out bloodboughtbornagain.com. Again, that's bloodboughtbornagain.com. And click on the Salvation tab to learn how to be saved if you aren't born again already. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Y'all take care.